Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joyce Singh. Joyce, the SAG Awards have just ended. It went long on Netflix. It was only two hours and like 12 minutes, but it felt longer than Killers of Flower Moon somehow. <laughs> it was so... did, you, did you feel that way? Oh, it was interminable. Oh my God. I, I, I think you tweeted this. I, you were not the only person I saw tweet this, but really a, a great ad for commercials. Bring back commercials. <laughs> it was a great, a great promotion for, for ads. I, so here's the thing. As you recall, last year, the SAG Awards streamed on Netflix's YouTube page. So they still had the same, you, you know, uh, predicament, whatever you want to call it, of, uh, you know, transitioning between awards and everything because it's not on broadcast. So there are no commercials. And they play montages and like past winners and stuff. And that was great. It was fine last year. They should have just stuck with that this year. It was a great show last year to the point where it was so great. I don't remember a lot about it. And this year I will never forget because between the opening intro, between I couldn't get over the way it sounded. They need, you know. The, the volume was very weird. Wow. Just like even at, like there was like one, it felt like there was one mic and no one was talking into it at any point. Uh. Just that was a tough beat. The the scripted uh, banter I felt was it could use a, a rewrite, perhaps in in certain ways. Um, yeah, the only good one was the Breaking Bad one. Uh, sure, I mean, even that I was out on. I I I I I'll tell you what, Idris Elba really charismatic and a charming performer, and I would love to see him host an award show someday. That was, I I was well when he. <laughs> When he came back to do supporting actor, I'm like, who dropped out here? I was like, was Pedro too drunk to do this or something? <laughs> like, like uh, I understand him coming back at the end, but like to do a category, <laughs> too, it, was it, just, it was very weird. It went long. Uh, I thought it was it lacked a flow. I would say, to put it mildly. Yeah, and then the backstage interviews, not not it. Uh, Tan France with the line I'll never forget to SAG Award winner and future Oscar winner Divine Joy Randolph. I watched the holdovers on a plane. That's what you want to hear, right? Um, yeah, you know, I I mean on Netflix and you know, great great promo for Focus. So Thank great. You know. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a lot. The, the the backstage interviews I was uh not a fan of. And I don't think anybody who was watching really was. What do you think of Lisa Ann Walters' bit where she was uh, mic'd up? You know, God bless her. I uh, love Lisa Ann Walter. You know, Chessie forever. Uh, that, uh, quite long. I loved. I love that it ended with her and Bradley talking because I was like, they're definitely talking about the Eagles, I feel like. They could make yeah, that work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to get him on Abbott this season, so. They should. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh, I was hiding my eyes when she was talking to Robert Downey Jr. I'm not going to lie. Just like this. Couldn't do it. I, I can't. I was so, I was the, the embarrassed, the second, he, I just was so, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do a lot of it. Yeah. So, you know, ads. Great. This Think was a that. great ad for ads. This was like maybe reboot Mad Men. That's how good it was. It made me really uh, long for the days of Madison Avenue. And selling us things we don't need. Joyce, that was the show. We'll talk about this later, of course. But the big news, I guess, we'll start with the film award winners and then go to we, TV. We buried later. a lead for like five minutes. Everyone is just skipping that part. So, I mean, they were missing really good banter, though, Joyce. <laughs> Better than what was going on on the show. Uh, burying the lead, uh, the film award winners, pretty chalk except for one category. But like that is also like not a shocker or anything either. So, uh, So to recap, Oppenheimer won Best Ensemble. Killian Murphy won Best Actor. Lily Gladstone won Best Actress Choice. And then Devon Joe Randolph, as we mentioned, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, for the supporting categories. So everyone's going to, big takeaway here is going to be Team Lily back at it uh, on her film way to- Twitter was, Film Twitter was, Film Twitter? Film Twitter was thrilled. Film, tw film Twitter was tittering. Yeah, they were. Uh, about this. It was a whiplash moment for Film Twitter because uh, obviously- I think we talked about this. There's a lot of uh, the, 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 the teams are basically Team Giamatti and Team Lily. And mm -hmm. that's who people seemingly have really wanted to win. And it felt like Killian has been largely discounted as he is 
steamrolled through the season with the biggest movie and the future best picture winner as an obvious best actor winner. And I still see people being like, I don't know. It seems like it's a race. And then, so when he won, which we both expected, uh, it felt like, oh, you could feel the SAG online. SAG from, from the SAG Awards. And then immediate boost up, at like an endorphin rush from Lily winning. Two minutes later. Uh, so it was whiplash on there. Um, Yeah, but again, like nothing shocking, even if, you know, I was, am I even first in the odds? I don't even know. Emma Stone. It's not like Annette Benning won, you know, so it was no. still, you know. Go, going into the SAG Awards, we we recorded our predictions earlier last week, and we both had pretty much all the same picks. So I think we ended up with the same results. So the only, uh, in stunts, we both had John Wick and, and my favorite movie, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning one, which shows the show. I should just pick my favorites, right? And obviously. In, in stunts? I guess. Uh, so we all got two, we got two of those wrong. We talked a lot about this and how, uh, yeah, it seemed like uh, online, everybody's like, Emma's going to win. And there had been a lot of people being like, oh, I talked to SAG voters uh, and Emma's going to win. And it seems like Emma's going to win. And Lily's way behind, even maybe Margot. And obviously that ended up not being true at all because she won. Which goes to show when you have 160,000 members of SAG-AFTRA, if you're only talking to 25, 50, 100, 500,000, you're really still not a lot of people. No, that's like barely 1% of the membership. So, so it's tough. Like it's, it's like a lot of people to poll and talk to in real life because you don't talk to that many people in a day. Right. You know, but in terms of that body, like it's like barely a drop in the bucket. It's the same thing with the anonymous ballots. It, it felt like a big anonymous yeah. ballot that this felt like a big anonymous ballot vibe fail because it was like, Oh, you got to take those anonymous ballots like gospel. And then no, it turns out Lily won. And we had talked about this when we were talking about Emma, it seemed like a lot of the momentum, which I still agree with on flower moon has diminished based on how it's performed. I mean, it's just, it's just Lily bust or, you know, her. So it's all Lily. And, Poor Things has the momentum and seemingly more well-liked, but clearly Lily had the momentum and has the performance and then also the narrative that we know SAG would probably enjoy. And so her winning makes sense. Yeah, like it's a, obviously she needed this win. You know, yeah. she hasn't, she and the film have not won anything since her Globe win. And that yeah. was uh, the only win for the film there. So, and... Yeah, like, obviously, if it was Emma who had won, then it would be like, yeah, it's over. Because she would have literally won everything. It, and because not even Killian won everything, you know, he won, he, uh, he lost Critics' Choice to Paul. Yes. And, yeah, and then so, like, Lily winning, like, this is our, our last open race above the line. And it's exciting. And this is what people also wanted, even if you're not partial to either of them right yeah, yeah. like me like i don't care if either of them wins but it's like it is it's exciting for another two weeks to have something to talk about here i mean that's the thing i i think when we do, we'll do our final picks in a couple of weeks and like i i feel like there's going to be a lot of people here who end up with like 22 out of 23 right it feels like there's not a lot of places there's all are... there's several categories below the line like vfx vfx yeah. maybe and sound i could argue maybe even animated but all of those feel like it's animated between, is like a coin flip so it, it feels like a lot of those are coin flips right those bo those ones and you could still end up with like 22 out of 23 it just feels like it's gonna be very predictable except I mean, for yeah, best you get the shorts rights too so i mean even the shorts i think are going to be pretty predictable mm -hmm. based on like what has seemingly popped so but this one i feel like yes that is a great race now and we could talk about it for two weeks and figure out what what's going to be i will say uh, like we talked about this last week uh, or I guess this week, because it's Saturday, Joyce. It's not even last week. It's this week. Also, people are like, why the SAG Awards on Saturday? I was like, literally 10 years ago, it was also on a Saturday. Like, did you guys not watch this 10 years ago? Probably not. I mean, I, not. I know a lot of people are young, so they probably did not get into the Oscars until like two years ago or something. I, I feel like the one thing I like with this is that all the stuff we've said about it is true. And the times it's split in recent years, this feels like it could be another one of those because you had Glenn Close won SAG and then Olivia won Oscar, right? That was one. And then what was, there was another one that was similar, like, uh, 
off the top of my head I forget what it was well I mean like literally just last year so this like this yes you know everyone would just be like it's Kate and Michelle again right but I I think it's actually more similar to Glenn and Olivia mm -hmm. um well Glenn won critics choice in a tie remember with right. Lady Gaga Right. And back then, they still had their genre categories, Critics' Choice. So they took care of Olivia with, like, the comedy actress mm -hmm. when there. But, you know, in terms of industry, it was a BAFTA, Olivia, and SAG, Glenn. And I would say that uh, Emma has the stronger film than Lily, just, like, how... Olivia had the stronger film than Glenn because the favorite did really well at BAFTA. Obviously, Poor Things did really well at BAFTA. Like, this is not a tar situation where it was like Kate or nothing. Right. You know? I I think the thing that would push it over the top for me, if I'm gonna I still don't know, like all the reasons we've said that Emma, all the reasons we've said that Emma would win, I still hold valid. But I do wonder, I cannot, I think the X factor is Lily because it's more about her now than the movie. Yeah, it's like, it's just about, so, I mean, you love, you love speeches. What do you think of her speech tonight? I thought it was not as good as her other speeches that I've seen, but I still would say that the room was like weeping. I mean, John Lithgow is like her castmate in the movie. I don't know how many, they're in, at least they're in the same, they're not, they don't interact, but I think they're in the courtroom together at least maybe, or like they're at least towards the end of the movie, but he was weeping. And I was like, people really... Love her. Emma Stone reacted so thrilled that Lily won. You know, well, they're besties. Crazy. They have Infinity Stone, right? I know, I know. I read the article. Uh, so I was like, people really are pulling for her to win. And I do wonder if that, because like what you're saying, I think is exactly right. Poor Things is a much more, in terms of like the, the ascendance of the movie, Poor Things is like this and Flower Moon is like this. But in terms of, and so switching, like thinking of the favorite versus Glenn Close for uh, the wife. That was like not like, you know what I mean? Like, man, Glenn is great, but nobody cared about that movie. Right. And like, it was like, that's an easy one to knock off. Did, did Tan France watch that on a plane? Did Tan France watch it? That's, I mean. I just think it's, a. I think that the reason it doesn't, it, like we've talked about how like none of these comps are really applicable, but we kind of look for comps. Even that one, I'm like, I think the, the, the strength of Lily as a performer and the way she has really, ruled the season as like a fixture on the campaign and a figure of like ascendancy kind of usurps the idea that the movie is not as strong so i think she could like i wonder if even like on paper maybe that doesn't it, it like negates a lot of the negatives maybe against flower moon um i mean i would hope like even if you didn't enjoy flower moon and you're voting in best actress like you're just focusing on her performance and not your hatred of the film or dislike of the film right you know and i think that's true and i do think a lot of times it doesn't matter but in this case i think she is like she is like the film you know what i mean like you know, i just think it is like this is like it is fully her now it, it, it's it's always been her and now it's like very clearly her or it's been very clearly her for the past month when right. it's like their winning chances and other categories have vaporized. So and it's like if she were to win after this, I mean, everybody would be like, we told you so. It was like Michelle and Kate last year, though. I don't think that's a great comp. No, that but like that's about. like, I mean, if, if Lily wins the Oscar, that's that's going to be, you know, the narrative forever. And it's like, reality it's doesn't matter. <laughs> Print the legend. It's a great movie. Liberty Balance, right? Print the legend. Uh, but if she were to lose, I guess I would point to like Viola from Ma Rainey or The Help, right? Versus like what actually won those years, which was like Meryl and Francis. And yeah, I mean, like you, what you're saying about the vibe in the room, like everyone crying over Lily and giving her sending O for a speech tonight, like that's literally what happened to Viola Davis in um, 2012, and she won for The Help at SAG, like. You felt like, I mean, I definitely felt that watching it back then. I was like, it felt like this room wants it for her. Mm -hmm. Like that was a euphoric reception to her win back then, like even more so than what Lily got tonight. And right. it really did feel like she was going to win. And we know she did not win in the end. 
Right. So, and I think that also is like another reminder. Remember, like the people in that room in the Shrine Auditorium tonight, that's not everyone who's going to vote for the Oscars. <laughs> They're voting right. right now, you know, or like, like most of those people in that room are not even Oscar voters, you know? Right. And I'm sure Oscar voting has been open for days. So it's like, you got to figure a lot of people probably have already voted. So this maybe would have no impact on their actual vote. And I'm I sure think they're... people are trying to make that comp to last year too with, uh, because like, like last year, just like this year, BAFTA was first and SAG was last as a precursor. Yes. But the Oscar voting dates were also different last year because like you said, Oscar voting is currently open. It opened on Thursday yes. and it closes on the 27th. And last year... SAG Awards were February 26th, it was Sunday, last Sunday, or last year on a Sunday. And Oscar voting started that Thursday, the following Thursday. So there were still a couple days for those, those you know, Everything Everywhere wins to sink in, or like specifically Jamie Lee Curtis's, I think. Yeah, I think that's true, right? Because it's like, this is a great springboard to be like, oh, I want to vote for this. You know what I mean? Like, I just saw them give a speech. Now I like, I love that. And now I think I'm like, I feel like most people probably already, a lot of people, who knows? A lot of people seemingly probably would have voted Yeah, right like this, this year, voting started five days after the BAFTAs. And I, as much as you know me, I love a speech and I love a narrative. I also have a hard time believing if you're torn on the two, like, do you need another Lily speech to know that she gives great speeches and that it's a great moment that people love her? Uh, I, that's, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think there's a voter. I can't imagine a person out there being like, okay, I got to sit here and watch these SAG Awards because... Uh, if this speech is good, like then I'll definitely I vote. Mean, for I mean, I definitely song. would not vote like that. I don't. I don't think anybody. I honestly don't think any. Even me, who loves the speeches, I don't think anybody would. I do think there is a sense of like you want to vote for a winner. Like it's certainly like, w and if it helps, if the voting hasn't started yet, because like I think like you said, like last year, like Jamie Lee definitely was probably helped by that, and maybe Michelle too, because you're like, oh, obviously that's great. I'm going to vote. I, she's going to win. I'm going to vote for her. You know, there people like to support a front runner and they like to put their weight behind somebody who they think is going to win. And so I do think maybe that helps a little bit, but in this case, I just don't know if there's enough there. So then you're left with trying to ascertain like, what does this Academy, which is extremely international and the whole brand, a whole body voting for these winners going to select between Lily and Emma. I still think, I mean, they could still select Lily, I wouldn't be surprised, obviously, uh, but it does seem to lean towards Emma based on what we've seen play out. Yeah, and I also don't know like what you're saying about, oh, you have to wait for <laughs> to watch the SAG Awards to make a decision on your Oscar ballot. I'm just like, why do you need that, though? Like, make your own decision. Like, what did you like more? Right. Like, now, why do you need to see someone win to, like, affirm your feelings about something? Like, just vote for your favorite. Now, I will say we've seen like the actors, I think the act, obviously the biggest branch and they're the they're going to like throw their weight around. Right. Like, if you know, in, at the Academy and just in general, if you heard Fran Drescher, Drescher's uh, campaign speech for is she running for president, Joyce? Did she run? Did uh, she apparently run? we're in the golden age now. Uh, is that right? Are sure. we sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like I, I guess so. I don't know. But uh in her speech, she was like, we're the most important people, basically. That was that was what I heard. I mean, actors always think they're the most important people. And I was like, well, they are the most important and certainly in the Academy because they're the biggest. So I was like, if if there's enough momentum behind Lily, they, she could definitely win. And when we do our final picks, you know I'm going to end up picking her probably. Don't be surprised if I am switching to Lily. You, you love a narrative and you were no. on her from her speech at the Gotham Awards. Yes, for for a different movie. Yes, for <laughs> Iron Country. So, so you know I'm going to go back to her. That being said, I I think all the reasons we've talked about for Emma to win would still make sense, and I do. I mean, think... I'm I'm honestly shocked you have not switched to her. I'm not going to switch yet. After tonight, I'm not going to switch yet. No. But I will. Like, like I'm not going to switch yet because all the yahoos who have been like, "Oh, she's going to win," are like probably like going to expect her to win now. So, <laughs> uh, I all the stuff we said about Emma winning, I feel like was remains locked in based on how we've seen the season play out. So I, I could I don't know what I'm going to do there, but this was a great moment for her. And like you said, like she needed to win because if she didn't win, she would be Paul Giamatti, who is now not going to win most likely. Uh, yeah. So this is like what I said um, last week, just it's playing out the same way of um, Eddie Redmayne and Michael Keaton, yeah. except it's the opposite person in the best picture winner. Right. So because Michael Keaton won uh, Critics' Choice. Right. Uh, and that makes sense looking back on it. In hindsight, 
yeah, and like they also those two guys had like the opposite type of roles that these two guys have, Gilly and Paul, you know, the yeah. biopic and then the comedic, you know, role, uh fictional person, you know, and um yeah, so Killian has both industry awards now and the Drama Globe. So I suspect people will switch over to him now. <laughs> I think maybe begrudgingly in some cases. I didn't realize it would be so fraught because I felt Me like either. everyone yeah, loves Killian. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's weird because usually, like we know, Best Actress is always the most fraught category. Yes. You know, and it feels like Best Actor, it, especially since since the Globes has like sort of become that or like coming close to that. But now it's kind of like, you know. I, I felt like last year, all all respect to Brendan Fraser. I felt like not a lot of people love the whale choice. Uh, it it was divisive, yeah. And not a lot of people loved Elvis. Also divisive, yeah. And so, like, it was an interesting race, but like, you were kind of like, okay, well, like, not as. And this year, by contrast, I'm like, man, people love Oppenheimer. People love both. They, they love the holdovers, but they're acting like the Oppen. I feel like a lot of times I'm looking at the stuff and I'm like. You know, Killian Murphy's great. It's not like we're talking The Whale and Elvis and Bohemian Rhapsody. We're talking Oppenheimer and Killian Murphy. He's really good. People like him. But you don't get that sense sometimes online. No, and I did thought it was interesting after the Globes last month when Killian and Paul won. And, you know, remember like like Bradley was, that, that, was, that was his uh, make it or break it. Like, you know, it was, tonight for Lily like he needed the globe to stay in the yes. race because yeah, of yeah. how polarizing Maestro was yes. and he was like the I, like a I wouldn't say front runner but like a, a popular pick I think I picked like him for the best globes. actor I think I picked yeah. him for the globes yeah but I'm not, I'm not I mean for the Oscars too oh Just, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and it felt like after the globes to me I don't know if you noticed this too but people like very quickly just dismissed you know went off of Bradley and then just went to Paul and just ignored Killian who actually won mm -hmm. the drama globe it, and this is also before Paul even won Critics Choice a week later yes it was it was very weird um but I think it just kind of goes to something we've talked about before and how like people are are treating like Killian like he's like a newcomer and he's not and watching, I, I, that's exactly right. And then watching tonight, like, just, again, it was tough to hear because the it was not, the crowd was Listen, not properly. I'm, I'm at my friend's basement and I was like, I don't know if it's just like a TV I'm not used to. I kept have to, <laughs> kept cranking up the volume. I was at 30 by the end. <laughs> it was it was not, not easy to hear. But I will say when they announced the nominees, there was a bigger cheer for, not, uh, who cares, in the room, whatever. But there was more cheers for Killian than there, that audibly than there were for Paul. And I just remembered us talking about like how, you know what show people love is Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. And Paul, uh, Kelly Murphy's in Oppenheimer, which is a huge movie. And also Paul has never won since SAG after merged. And I was like, all these things, I think people just kind of like didn't pay attention to or ignored. And it's like, actually, this is why, these are the reasons why the Killian was going to win. And then he did win. And it was yeah, like- And remember I said last week, like something I learned this season from real yeah. conversations was that a lot of people have no idea how massive Peaky Blinders right. was. But, and we mean people like online, because obviously in the industry, I think it's very well known. Yeah, so, there are a lot of famous so. people who love it and like obviously has like a ton of fans, you yes. know, and a ton of fans within, I imagine, sag after as well. But yeah, I think, it, I don't know, like I guess because like it didn't win a bunch of Emmys, like it wasn't like an awards play or something, but it's a huge popular show like every time Killian does an interview like someone asks like oh is there gonna be a Peaky movie right you know uh, and um and I think like that matters like you said with you know as, since the merger like SAG after and like Paul hasn't won like he has four SAG awards but they were all pre-merger and yeah like Oppenheimer we know was the bigger movie and a a populist movie too and SAG is the most populist group and it's a biopic role and yeah and like he's not he's not new like he's he's been in a ton of 
Hollywood blockbusters too. Like he's been in five Christopher Nolan movies before this. Right. You he know, was in Batman. He was, yeah. Like he was in 20 Days Later. He was in Red Eye. <laughs> like, he was in A Quiet Place uh, 2, which was two, a decent of Emily. Movie. Yeah. And I, I think, I think it's like, because he's just not Hollywood, you know, like he does not court attention. He just goes back to Ireland, minds his own business, you know, eats cheese, watches Succession walks his dog on the beach just living his life right. and i think like there's this like cognitive dissonance is like we're not used to seeing him like you know he's not on social media like we're not seeing used to seeing him like in tabloids or like online like he just like comes out of his cave when he has to promote a movie you know yeah and all so i just feel like I mean, now I think everybody's just going to go to him, begrudgingly, maybe in some cases. But I mean, it would be hard to imagine a scenario where he doesn't win Best Actor when we already know Oppenheimer is going to win Best Picture and Best Director and Best Supporting Actor and multiple Crafts Awards as well. Yeah, and I think people, like one of the arguments against Killian all season two was that, um, you know, a picture and actor have not lined up. Yeah. Um, Since The Artist... And this is the art. We talked about this. This is going to be the artist because it's against an Alexander Payne performance with yes. a beloved actor in the lead role who's not going to win. And mm -hmm. I think, no disrespect to Jean Dujardin, who I absolutely love in Wolf of Wall Street and in other movies. And he's fine in The Artist, a movie I haven't really seen since it came out. I think Killian's win will age a little better. Yes. Assuming he does win, which we assume now. Since he's basically steamrolled through, like you said, he hasn't won everything. But I mean, like, Man, it's hard to like. He should he he should be discussed now. I feel like along the lines of Downey and Randolph as locks. Yeah, and and this is also like no shade to Paul Giamatti at all. Paul Giamatti, no. and I love Paul Giamatti. So if he had won tonight, and if if he wins the Oscar, like I would be very happy. Um, I, I, I don't know what he's got coming up, Paul Giamatti. Uh, but I feel like the next time he like this is this feels to me. Like the next time he's in a movie, uh, he'll absolutely be a heavy it'll, it'll favorite. Be, it'll be his time. He'll be he'll be due again. <laughs> I think he. I think it, unless it's like who knows. I don't know what he's got coming up. Like I said, let me. I'm, I'm scanning here to look. Uh, nothing at least on his pages on his wiki page. But I'm like the next time he's in something, I feel like yes, he'll like be immediately like oh well he could win and like will be very seriously considered because yeah. everybody does love him. Yeah. And. It's not his fault necessarily, obviously, that he's running into a steamroller of Opp like an Opp Oppenheimer is like a juggernaut now, like everything everywhere where it's going to win seven, eight Oscars. Basically, it's like hard to overcome that when your movie is very well liked, but is only going to probably win one. Yeah. Um, And. Yeah, I I think, you know, and like this is something we talked about last week, too, and how. It, it felt like a lot of the the case for Paul was also resting on his do-ness. And it yes. was like, everyone in this category is arguably do. Yeah. I, you know? <laughs> they would prefer if Paul was 75 years old. Some of yeah, these. like, it was like, people were talking about him like he was in his 80s or something. I'm like, they're all around the same age. He's not even the oldest in the category. It's Jeffrey. I mean, right. it's the same people at the Oscars. You know? And, like, like... Killian is the youngest in the category, but he's only nine years younger than Paul. You know, it's like they're all in the same kind of age group. They're like contemporaries, basically. And, um, you know, like Bradley has obviously had the most awards recognition out of all of them. Very few wins, but he has the most nominations. And Paul actually has the most wins out of all of them. <laughs> you know, he has four yeah. SAGs. So... And then, like, you know, it's like you have, like, Killian and Jeffrey and Coleman getting their first nominations after being in the business for three decades, you know? Yeah. So, congrats to Killian, basically, is what we're saying. <laughs> his speech was great. I thought his was really endearing. I love, uh, in terms of speeches, uh, I've seen light pushback on Divine Joe Randolph having printed out her speech still. I'm just like, she could print out the speech. It's fine. Who cares? And her speech was actually really good. It was her speeches have always been great. Like her BAFTA really speech was great one. too. She she made Paul cry at BAFTA. Yeah. I, I really loved her speech, and I'm really excited for her to win. Yeah, uh, I was thinking, how great is it to be Emily Blunt, get nominated everywhere, 
your movie's gonna win best picture you know you have no shot of winning and you just get to be there and be having a great time i was like man she's like what a life that's she loves this like she finally got the nomination you know and she knows she's losing to Dave Vine and she and Dave yeah. Vine have become friends, like yeah. her text buddies sure. and everything. And I, like, I love she's it. Just, like a happy cheerleader and it's great. And I think you kind of like noticed that too in terms of the campaign because like Emily was everywhere in phase one because it was like securing the nomination, you know? And she's, done, she's still done stuff in phase two, but not as much as phase she's, one. Whereas they is... really cranked it up for Killian too. Right. That's what I was going to say. I feel like they've all like collectively- yeah pushing Killian forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved Killian's speech because he uh, got to mention Olivia Thoroughly, who I love uh, as an actor. And I was like, yeah, that's great. Call her out. That's good. I, I love when he references a failed uh, music career 28 years ago. Just and great. he thought he was going to be a failed interloper into acting. And, and I, I got to say, I love Downey's speech. Can't wait for him to win an Oscar. I, watching the clips, I was like, first uh, one of the a positive about the broadcast choice clips love a clip yeah that was that was really i was like we got clips for everything because that's a problem when it's on broadcast when they towards the end of the show they're running tight they cut the clips and 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 great clips great clips and i almost almost great for all of them (laughs) Well, I like the when they did them like the past winners for before like each ensemble award like that was good too i love the supporting actor one just because like the alphabetically Gosling was last and they all like all the nominees were just cracking up. Over that's I was like watching. That's what I was going to bring up because I was like he they picked a great clip because it was not like a typical clip. It was him being like talking about the mini fridge. It's just so funny. It's such a great moment at the end of the movie. And I was like, man, he's fucking hilarious. And all like all of them were hysterical laughing. I was they like, this guy dying. is. <laughs> so good it's such a great it re- literally it's a really great performance i know he's not gonna win but watching the clips i was like god damn i wish he would win one of these <laughs> like, he's so good do you think he's been runner-up at all of these places so far i don't think i think tonight he was runner-up i i just i even though barbie obviously did not win a single thing uh and much to the chagrin of people who probably predicted it to win ensemble I just felt like the vibe would be that he would be runner up. He's so, it's so funny. It's such a great performance and it's such a sag performance. It feels like just in general, I feel like he could have been runner up, but nowhere else. I don't think he would have been runner up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope they do clips at the Oscars and they pick not the same clip for Ryan, but like another really good one. I There's so many. It's one of the f- great, great performances of our lifetime uh, is Ryan Gosling and Barbie. He's so funny in it. Also, um, I thought they, they really tried to like play up um, like the, the themes and the, 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 the elevated dramatic elements of Barbie when they were doing the ensemble yes pieces, right and I was like this is like not the vibe of the film it's it's a comedy no. it's pretty yeah. funny you, got, you should if you haven't seen Barbie you should probably watch it it's really funny uh yeah Downey's speech was great uh I love when he calls out all the people who helped him along the way even if they're not good people anymore uh just that's nice Mel Gibson I saw people tweeting about why do you mention Mel Gibson I'm like well Mel basically like saved his career a hundred years ago. So yeah. Uh so, yeah, Downey's great. And I yeah, thought it and yeah. like the this he wrote all caps again in on the card. Great. So. I was literally thinking that I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. Again, would love Ryan Gosling to win for Barbie. But I'm like, it is great to be able to say Robert Downey Jr. will potentially be an Oscar winner. I'm excited for that moment. Yeah. Um, and then we're on track to have um one movie win uh actor and supporting actor every 10 years again because it happened 10 years ago and it happened 20 years ago yeah so i was thinking of that too uh and we're also on track maybe to have every movie win an oscar every best picture nominee win an oscar but not past lives not past lives and not maestro (laughs) maybe so eight out of ten (laughs) every movie except for one (laughs) (laughs) i mean maestro can still win it can win makeup it really could. So, but yeah, but Abby won three. I love that we just skip skip it over ensemble because it's like I mean, well, it's ensemble. I mean, it's best picture, but it's like. You so know. here's the thing about ensemble. It seemed incredibly obvious when we were doing our predictions and just in general that Oppenheimer would win. Again, it was the biggest movie outside of Barbie uh, of the year uh, and a massive critical hit, mm-hmm. a mainstream blockbuster that everyone seemingly liked. And so, like, why wouldn't it win? basically but i saw we discussed i saw a lot of people like going maybe they would pick barbie 
in like a hidden figure yeah or like since, since the snubs you know right or like american fiction and i think in case of barbie we talked about this they the industry did like the that's what the money is for that's what the industry is saying it, it is loudly saying that's what the money is for uh and with american fiction for it to have been coda oppenheimer would have had to been a much more dry it would have movie. Been the dog. yeah and it's not dry it's not like it's like we said like it's not it's very mainstream it's very like poppy it flies it just moves. it's it's a four quadrant hit yeah and, and like, it's also like if you think about it it's like it's the perfect type of SAG ensemble winner. Yes. Because so. it's massive stars. It's guys who have been knocking around for 100 years. It's I really years. wish that uh, Josh Hartnett, I love that I can call him SAG award winner Josh Hartnett, uh, gave the speech. But we got Kenneth Branagh and his amazing beard. Which so is what, awesome. what is he working on? I have no idea. <laughs> Joyce, I got to say, I watched, I went, I went and saw this on fr- Friday. I went and saw Tenet. In the seventy million. Oh, you did did it IMAX. I did the IMAX. Mm-hmm. And how man, was it? Well, it's it's just a great fucking movie, and Kenneth Branagh is so good in it. Like he's so evil. It's truly one of the great villain performances. And I was just like, man, he's so great with in like all these Nolan movies. I'm just like, love Kenneth Branagh. Love him so much. A great speech. I thought his speech was great too. So it was good to see him speak for the cast. Uh, who who is the? I guess I could look. Let me see. Who who wins as part of Oppenheimer? Yeah. Here we it's, go. Um I got it here. Yeah. Casey Affleck, Emily Blunt, Kenneth Branagh, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Josh Hartnett, Rami Malik, Killian Murphy, and Florence Pugh. Yeah. They got Kenneth- a great agents with the single title card. Yeah. So I I, I saw like uh Alden Aaron like not did not win, even though he was there. And David Crumholtz yeah, David on stage. Yeah. They get those people, they get a certificate. Yeah. So but, I also thought of that when they did the Flower Moon intro because I was like, I know, because I'm like, they're they're not gonna be part of the win. Well, they were because Tan. I think Tan Two is actually a, a she had an. Oh well, no, but I'm talking about um the, the the cast that attended. Like most of them are not. No, most of them weren't. But when they came, I'm sorry, I was talking about when they came up to intro the clips or the movie. I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. they they better make sure it's Tan Two because otherwise it's gonna be Lily and like two white guys because that's a whole lot of people who were nominated in the movie. The only two Native American actors are are or indigenous actors are Lily and Tantu, uh, who are among the cast. Yeah, the others were Bob, Leo, Brendan, John Lithgow, and Jesse Plemons. Yeah. So. Uh, and then that's about it for the movie side of things, Joyce. I guess anything else here before we move on to TV and then do some emails? Um. No, not really. You know, we still have one exciting race, which should make everyone happy no matter. Well, I guess I shouldn't say no matter who you're pulling for. I guess that's speaking for myself because I don't care who wins. But I think the teams care very much so who wins. (laughs) Yeah, we don't want to like, I don't want to like besmirch anybody who's like super invested in this. But I would say, we talked about this, like in terms of like personal preference, they're both great, I think. Uh, I think actually with Sandra Huller would be my personal choice, but maybe she Lily. She won the Cesar yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or maybe Lily. Like I said, I love her performance in the movie, even if I think Poor Things is maybe better overall than Flower Moon. Um, but yeah, so I'm like, whoever wins, I'd be thrilled. Uh, so it, it doesn't really matter. This is a great, there's no, again, this is not like, uh, there's not a Bohemian Rhapsody here. No, and that was another case where Critics' Choice went their own way because- mm-hmm. Rami won everything except Critics' Choice and who went with Christian Bale. And that was more a case of like, we hate Bo Rap. And we like, we cannot give it to Bo Rap. But then went with Vice. I mean, you know, that year was, I know you wanted your guy Bradley Cooper, but that year was kind of rough. Not so, for Bradley. Also, also, what do you think of um, Bradley coming out, you know, to to help out Jennifer Aniston with the Barbra Streisand? Streisand. 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 Why wasn't that part of the package? Well, he it wasn't need to be because he said it like that. I was like, it was like literally like watching licorice pizza. Uh, yeah, I thought it was fine. I was I loved his eyeglasses. I thought those looked good. Those are the eyeglasses that uh, Rob Liebman, who played uh, Rachel's dad on Friends, wore. It, He's wore it them made, a lot. It made me laugh because I was like, I mean. I just like Jennifer Aniston being like, I hung out with Barbara Streisand on New Year's Eve. I gave her a kiss. And, I, and then Brad, here's my best friend. Here's my good friend, Brad, 
And I'm like, all of these people are friends. It just is so strange to me that they're all like hanging out all the time. Why? It's it's Hollywood. Know. It it just it just throws me off sometimes. I mean, you know, Bradley's also been around for a while, so it's... I saw a lot of a lot of people also I saw not a lot of people, but I definitely saw at least one or two people being like, I mean, is it great that Barbara Streisand like waited till Sidney Pollock died and then like re-edited way we were? I'm like, who gives a shit? Let her like, you know, it's fine. The movie's still the movie. It's not yeah. the the way we were still exists the way it was. I don't know. People have a lot but of But what did you think about her speech? Very long. Very, very long. The show was too long. I, I mean, again, I, I can't even stress this enough. It would have been better on TV because it would have been shorter, like regular TV. I just couldn't believe and it it's was also so like, long. It didn't even go over. I mean, it's like, what, like 12 minutes or whatever? Like, it's not that much longer, but it was just the it, the pacing and the production. Was, yeah, well, because there's no ads, it actually felt like yeah. incredibly long. Like, so there's probably usually, if you're a two-hour show, what are they like? Probably like eight to 10 minutes of ads per hour, right? So this was like very long. I you know, and none of the, it wasn't from the speeches and they didn't need to cut any speeches off and they the were all wonderful were, were all fine. and they were all like very well timed. Nothing felt like it dragged. Barbara went on a little long, uh, but you know, that's her. But also expected. So yeah, that's her prerogative. She could do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't, don't begrudge her at all I for that. I can't believe Josh Brolin did not make it. He's, he's in New York for the Dune premiere tomorrow. Yeah. I had, a, I had more of a problem with the interstitial uh, interviews, which just felt like. Just. And also, we did not really need that final one, you know, before. And then he was like, oh, here's the next award. I'm like, it's still awesome. The last award. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they could have done. Like you said, maybe throw some clip packages together. And they did. I would have been fine, like, watching more montages. And it would also, especially, like, it, like they could have done, like, past winners. Or they could just be promoting, like, the the upcoming categories, like the nominees. Like, you know, that's it's a way to encourage viewers to check out these films or shows if they haven't seen them yet too uh, they did more of this on the tv side which we'll get to shortly in terms of like reuniting past groups but they put back together gina davis and jeff goblin to do ensemble for for the fly reunion and their marriage uh reunion i guess yeah what what do you think that i was trying to, i i couldn't for the life of me i was just like what is the SEO play that Netflix is doing here for this? I don't I couldn't even wrap my head around it. Okay. What are they promoting? So when they, so they at they because they did the Modern Family for comedy and Breaking Bad for yes. drama, which were great. The yeah. the Modern Family banter went on way too long. The Breaking Bad one was fine, and then and they they had already reunited Elijah Wood and Sean Astin way earlier in the show. And and they did the whole thing of, you know, Lord of the Rings one ensemble 20 years ago. I'm like, why didn't you have them do ensemble at the end? I, I, it made no sense, right? Because what were they even doing? Who did they give out an award to? They did. I don't What was it like? Was it like Ali Wong? I don't know. It was like the first or second award. Or was it Pedro? Was it Pedro? I don't even know. But it was like way early in the show. And... But then, like, once I realized, like, what they were doing with the reunions, I'm like, they they should have done ensemble. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I it made, it did make a lot of sense. But I, I love Jeff Goblin and Gina Davis. They're great. No, no, no shade to them. No shade they were to great, them. But they should have swapped categories. <laughs> it just felt a little strange to end on this, this luxurious did you, fly reunion. Did you reunion. play the Devil Wears Prada reunion? Honestly, no. Because I just felt it was like, I, they weren't mic'd right. And it just felt like really a little half-assed it was great seeing them all together emily blunt looked fucking thrilled she had uh she just looked so tickled to do the lines and like make fun of meryl basically uh but yeah i don't know i also was like this 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 was just another like ugh. but like Anne is wearing cerulean blue yeah she was. we all seen the movie we all know she's wearing blue we all get the reference and then 30 seconds later you got tan france being like and there she was wearing her cerulean blue i'm like no shit we got it you don't need to say it i don't need it underlined step on the I joke don't don't you? god yeah that i was not as super I, I i just wish it would have been better i will say i love meryl's like pratfall like kind of knocking into the mic i thought that was good you, she, you know who's a good actor she's, good it, yeah. she's a good good actor yeah. meryl mm -hmm. the other thing i loved watching the clips was meryl 
acting surprised when she won for doubt i guess that was when she she was or what what year what, what was one of the yeah, that, that was that was for doubt but that was also like you remember when kate winslet had two movies yes revolutionary road and yes. the reader so yeah i haven't seen the reader uh revolutionary road still should have won she was great in that great movie <laughs> I saw the hot takes being uh, thrown out that Tim and is bad because of the Beatles stuff. And it's like revolutionary. It's still good. Uh, Joyce, we'll do TV stuff here quick and then we'll do emails. Uh, we were not as successful in predicting the TV because they do not like this individual succession actors. Um, remember when we were saying you should just predict the front runners and just take the L wherever it comes we instead did. of trying to pick. Yeah the category or categories the upsets might come in. I don't know how many people would have picked those two categories, drama, actor, and actress. Well, I, I will say, I will say, I'm sure a lot of people pick Pedro Pascal because people have been wanting Pedro Pascal to win. Yeah, Pedro Pascal was like a Paul Giamatti. And it happened and everybody was thrilled. I, I think Sarah Snook, given the success of Last of Us here at the, the SAGs, I think a lot of people probably went with Bella Ramsey instead of Sarah if they were going to go. I don't know. I mean, you can make an argument for, I think, all of them except for Kerry Russell. Like, right. Jen has won before. And, yeah, obviously Elizabeth won. So, and yeah, and Bella would make sense too, especially, at, like, since that was after Pedro's win. Right. So. Uh, let's do a quick here. So we can start there with drama. Succession wins ensemble. Great. Again. another yeah. ensemble win mm -hmm. and elvis uh, gives the speech which you you called i feel like mm -hmm. yeah well we we knew that he was gonna go because he lives in la and it was a great turnout i gotta say it was much bigger than i expected for like that. ace cars ace cars also presenting great. ace cars presenting really doing yeah. hilarious bit great with, banter uh, are you gonna Omar do Sa, like yeah i love that <laughs> uh yeah i loved seeing all the succession cast there i thought that was great they had like literally almost all of them? It, felt it was like. everyone except Brian, Sarah, and Jeremy. I mean, Zoe Which being there, I was like weighing on. Zoe Winters was there. I love that. I loved uh, Arian was there, obviously. Fisher Arian was like one of the first people on the carpet. So. Just great. Justine Loop. The whole crew. I love seeing them together. And it was like the last time we're going to see them together, which actually made it me was. a little emotional thinking of that. It's like, wow. It's like a bummer. Yeah, Elda Sun talked about it on the carpet. Like, this is Man. their... I mean, because like they're not all going to the PGAs tomorrow. <laughs> no, I, I can't imagine they are. Uh, so who wins best drama or a uh, drama ensemble? Uh, but then, yeah, like Pedro Pascal wins for a drama actor. Stunt. And we both talked about how like Kieran would just win. But I wonder if there was, do you think that like they must have votes split more than maybe we expected? Or do you think it was just like people love Pedro? Um, I think it's a lot of things, but I I think it's primarily um, SAG AFTRA just you know being like pretty basic and mainstream. I think I think they're a little too basic for Succession. But individually. They, they do, but I think. Um, it it kind of reminds me how, uh, like Mad Men and uh, never won individually either, but it won. It kept winning ensemble. Right. It's like that to me. It's like you appreciate the cast as a whole, but like the individual actors and those roles and performances aren't saggy enough. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think like in Pedro's case, it's also like he's. A hugely popular i think he actually has the most appeal to sag after than necessarily at like the emmys or the globes and even critics choice even though it seems like everyone online loves him i so, yeah I, I think that's true i think yeah i think it's I, I think it hurts succession in a way with the voting body so large and i think like when it's you know smaller whether it's the globes you know when it's like a more like, exclusive voting body like the globes um emmys and even critics choice like that's only like like 600 members you know mm -hmm. like that benefits them more and remember sag had never nominated succession until season three like completely blank season one which fine makes sense because it, it you know not a lot of people watch 
season one anyway, but it took off in season two and it was blank for season two completely too. So they were very slow to get on the succession bandwagon. Right. Um, yeah, and his speech was great, I thought. Yeah, he was definitely not expecting to win and he was drunk. Looked like a pirate. Amazing. I love it so much. Everything about it was perfect. He really definitely did not expect to win. And I will say, as much as the tan uh, backstage interviews were absolute garbage. That was the only was, good one. <laughs> it was really good. And it's all because of Pedro. Uh, but like, man, he was so great. And I thought his interview was like so endearing and I just absolutely love him. So I'm like, I was glad he won, even though I think I would have obviously gone Kieran personally, but I'm like, yeah, man, Pedro Pascal's great. He, he's a great yeah. actor and a great personality. And I just love him so much. So. I'm just very excited to see what Kieran's wife, Jazz Tarden, a queen is going to story later and tomorrow of them. Just razzing each other, good. making out their makeout sessions. So Sandy, we're gonna make out, so we'll yeah. look at we'll look forward to that. Uh, and then in the drama actress or female actor in a drama series, as SAG calls it, Elizabeth Debicki wins for The Crown on Netflix. Also, over, stunned. over Snooky. Yeah, and The Crown is the first show to produce three different winners in this category because Claire Foy won twice, and Gillian Anderson one so we know sag loves the crown of the crown um and yeah they love netflix we know that and love a physical transformation playing mm-hmm. a real life person and it's Let's diana go. so it, it all makes it sense like the, she's the best part of the last season <laughs> she certainly was it all makes sense in hindsight again i just was like my my rationale for picking like you said like hey we've got to pick all the favorites because there's like no way it could be that different from what the favorites are. And it proved true based on the results. Uh, Cause every, it, even the stunt ensemble went to last of us. Whereas even in, in the film site, it was maybe an upset in terms of the odds. Um, yeah. So, but like at the same time, I, my real rationale for succession winning was like, this is the last hurrah for them. Like they're going to just let them win. Basically. I didn't really have like a great, you know, why wouldn't they win would be the, <laughs> and they didn't. So I didn't have like a great reason for them, but yeah, I think it's like the the succession style of acting is is not what SAG necessarily likes. No. Like I think it it you can just like you like they can still win cast and you can still appreciate the cast as a whole, you know, but I think it's like it's different when you're looking at the individual races and the and the roles and the characters and the performances. You know, like the crown is sag bait, right? Like yeah. even morning show was baity, like Jennifer won. You know, so. I almost when they, were, when they were going through the nominees, I was like, what if Jennifer wins again? I mean, she totally could have. I know. I, it just, I, it's funny when you're sitting there at home. I was like, man, why did I pick Snook? Well, I was, I was re- well, because like since Succession already lost drama actor, I was ready for Sarah to lose. Yeah, same. So. I was right. It was it was just like two years ago. Like Squid Game won for Lee Jung Jae and Hoyeon, and Succession won cast. So I was like, it's gonna be after Kieran lost. I was like, it's gonna be the same thing. It's like she's not gonna win actress or female actor, and they're gonna win cast again. And it happened. So it's very funny. Like I didn't for one second doubt that it was gonna win cast. Exactly. Yeah. Like never at all. Mm-hmm. Just. Not a not a care in the world. I was like, obviously it's going to win cast. Uh, but like, even after it lost all these other, uh, yeah, categories. it was like it's that's they're still locked for ensemble. And you know what? They they deserve ensemble the most. So, but it does suck that, um, the show has finished without ever winning an, an individual SAG award. Pretty like, cool. no actor on that show has won individually at SAG because it, SAG missed them the first two years completely. And then refuse to give them one for season three or four. <laughs> so, uh, other TV winners was the Bear, just won everything as expected. Like we said, hard to bet against that. Yeah, it's the third comedy to sweep SAG after uh, Thirty Rock and Maisel. The only thing I kept thinking about was what are we going to do here next year. Next year with Hacks. Yeah. 
And obviously Jeremy will just win again, I imagine. <laughs> and the show will probably win again, I imagine. Sight unseen for season three. They, I mean, they can, yeah, they can go back to Gene. But they could go back to Gene or maybe, I, who knows? I guess, we'll see. Um, And then Beef wins the two, it's two. I, I, like we, we discussed this, I thought that would have been the place for any of these upsets. That was my most likely place, but obviously no. Would have been Allie or like Bree instead of Allie. Yeah, but no, they just did Ali Wong and Steven Yeun. So, uh, uh, and yeah, I was ready for, a, for beef. a Tony Shalhoub win here. <laughs> yeah, and that's the last hurrah for beef, I guess, until the PGA. I mean, tomorrow to win, I'd imagine. But yeah, um, what did you think of Ali Wong's dress? So I really liked it because it looked like she was walking. Uh, uh, she was auditioning for Guardians of the Galaxy Four, maybe. <laughs> to play Groot but then she took off all the stuff right when she won yeah well it was funny because a, a lot of the reactions from her carpet picks people were like I feel bad for whoever's like at her table I'm like she's obviously taking that off <laughs> I thought this I, I, I was saying a great thing would be how do you sit in these dresses that's mm -hmm. a great search so one of these brands should do that it's like an SEO post because I was like yeah. how does how does how does Marco Robbie sit in her dress? That's what I was thinking. Right. I mean, there are a lot of, um, or, or like in, in the past, like a lot of these celebrities, like makeup teams or whatever, will tweet like videos, like, you know, on Instagram and stuff or post videos on Instagram of like, you know, how they got ready and everything and how they take off for the show. And some of them, they have to like, they can't sit like in a car. They have to kind of like, like lay, lay or something right yeah, yeah. So they don't wrinkle their dress like the woman yeah um i know i forgot what a war show was but i think kate blanchett took the bus or the train to the award show so she didn't have to sit that's awesome yeah this is what women go through so i was watching uh before the before the show i was watching the carpet did you watch any of that no not to, not not the not the greatest, but I will say one of the interviews was at the end, right before it started, was Bradley uh, Cooper and, and Carrie Mulligan, and they were like, "We got to talk fashion," and like Carrie looked great. Carrie looked great. She said, apparently, uh, uh, she had a wardrobe malfunction. She said, and then was changed into whatever she was wearing that we saw her in. Maybe it was Dior. I don't actually know. And then Bradley, then they were like, "What about you, Bradley?" Obviously, because he can't just ask Carrie what what she's wearing. And Bradley was like, "I just wanted to be suitable." And I was like, I've seen you in the I'm hangover. I was like, I've seen you in the hangover. You're actually funny. You could do better. <laughs> like maybe we do a rewrite on that one. How long has he has he been sitting on that one? I don't know. Too long, maybe. I also love um the beginning, the the first montage they played at the opening of the show after the I'm an actor thing. The the first film featured was Maestro. Gotta gotta get him tune up. Uh, I love that it opened with Dance the Night Away where I was like, man, that is really the biggest song. I can't believe it didn't even get nominated. And it's like, it wouldn't have won, but I'm like, man, that is the, the song from Barbie as it turns out. Yeah, I think of of those three, I would pick that as my favorite. I certainly, it'll be what they I would do that, I'm with, just right? 10, and uh, what was I made for? What? They'll definitely open the Oscars with like Dance the Night Away, right? Like a montage or something. I I don't know. I would imagine like you want you want Dua Lipa to perform on the Oscars. I mean that would be great, but I don't think she will. I don't it's, think this is a Bruno situation. So no, probably not. Uh, anything else there on the SAG Awards or is on the TV side? Nothing really. But congrats to the winners. No. Um. Yeah. You know we got we got some surprises here. So you know for everyone who was bored as fuck from the last month of the three same shows winning. You got some surprises here, some new faces. So stop complaining. <laughs> and then, the uh, you know, two of these shows are done. So they're gone. And a whole so new batch gotta, of shows. Gotta, like, just got to deal with the bear now. I did appreciate that they picked funny clips for the bear. They did. I mean, they only have the one clip to show Jeremy not catching the phone. That is a funny clip. It's yeah. a great, it's a great deadpan. Uh, what was Io's clip actually? She was. She oh, was when what is it? It's when she was trying to recruit people outside. Yeah, the yeah, restaurant. yeah. I was like, she was talking to someone. Yeah, um, yeah. 
And then, yeah, Evan is the mold. So that was great. That made me laugh even watching the clip. I was like, that's a really great. I wish I I understand why, but I wish they made they let uh, Maddie Matheson accept again because I wanted him. I wanted him to scream Solberg again. I love that uh, Jeremy, like specifically, he shouted out Evan in his speech and was just like, everybody else is great, too. I just love that. I'm like, he doesn't give a fuck. Just fine. But he, he, loves just, his... he just felt bad about beating Evan, you know, because like they're not normally in the same category together. And then I guess la- the only other thing here was the in memoriam, Joyce. What you think of that? Nice. Uh, SAG always has um pretty well produced packages for in memoriam. Yeah, so. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was good. I liked how they chose the. Well, you couldn't hear the applause. I don't even know if you could. They could have had the mics on. It wouldn't have mattered because you couldn't hear anything in the crowd. But I like that they chose talking clips for the more famous people. Like, the RIP to everybody, but really, you know, RIP I mean, to like most, most award shows do that. I also love that they included Lee Sung Kun, um, you know, Parasite. Yes. But I was annoyed they did not include Parasite in the montage for the ensemble winners. So... That was strange too. It felt like a real miss because it was so yeah, obviously real, like real miss within all their other wins. It would have fit in very nicely. Yeah, and it was also a historic win. <laughs> so Art, I don't understand how they missed that. Yeah. Uh let's do some emails here, Joyce. We have we got a few about the SAG Awards and then just a couple in general. So I'll start with those since they're uh fresh. They're fresh. They're fresh into the inbox. Email us at slugfest at goldderby.com. And we'll read the rest on Wednesday when we record. But this one is from Eldest Son, Joyce. I'm wow. This is a pseudonym based on. Is it is it like Eldest Son at conheads.com? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why do they hate succession as actors? At, why, excuse me. Why do they hate succession actors as individuals? Um, I mean, I think it's kind of like what I just said earlier. This this like the acting style not not really um super appealing to sag after i i mean maybe if it were just sag i don't even know because like mad men couldn't even do it when it was just sag i I think you're right though i do and i definitely think like all the stuff we had said like for months about like sarah snook playing an unlikable and air quotes person like probably hurts with sag but i do wonder how much Matthew and Kieran split their own votes. I don't know. I just, I could just see it because they're both so good and they both had such great final seasons that I do think that could have played a factor too. Yeah, and they and they didn't face each other the season, at right? Other shows, and so. I'm like, they're not SAG, maybe SAG typical SAG performances, but I do think like Kieran has got like that. He kind of is doing. Kieran like, is the most saggy performance. Yeah, because yeah. he's like you know, it's like in the. Like the Billy Crudup, like Billy Crudup is doing like Kieran Light, maybe. You know what I mean? Like it's just. Yeah, no, that's why I like two years ago, I predicted Kieran to get in with Jeremy and Brian because it's like he's the one, even though it was like Tom season, season three, it was like Roman is the type of character that SAG would like. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I think maybe so. But we'll never know. know. Yeah. But yeah, I but like that that makes it look worse for Sarah then, you know, because she had no internal competition. Right. <laughs> I think they they just rejected Sarah, maybe, unfortunately. Which it is- also sucks because she has never gone to the SAG Awards because obviously no reason for them to go the first two years or their first two seasons. And she didn't go last time two years ago when they won because she was filming. And then she posted like her she she was like posted her reaction on set because she was watching on the laptop when they won so yeah so she's never been to the sag awards it seems like a nice show i don't know sarah snook and i never been to sag awards there you go you have something Uh, this one's from sarah uh hi joyce and chris uh love the show how annoyed are you that people are still going to make the kate blanchett michelle yo comp now that Lily has won the SAG Awards. Very annoyed. <laughs> Period. That's it. <laughs> it's just incredibly reductive. And like I said before, even if Lily wins the Oscar, it's still, the races were completely different. 
I mean, it does feel strange because the races are completely completely different, excuse me, and the movies are so completely different. And like mm-hmm. we have said, Tar and Killers are much more comparable and Poor Things and Everything Ever are much more comparable. And so it does feel like you're just honestly just reducing it to here is a white actress who is an Oscar winner versus a woman of color who is not an Oscar winner. Yeah. Just seems pretty reductive and silly. But I guarantee you, everyone's going to be like, Oh, they, they've already made that. I'm or looking like, right now my for you that. algorithm. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, let me see how it's going the over the past there. hour and a half. So, <laughs> uh, this one is from Emil, uh, who writes Hi, Joyce and Chris. For better or worse, Oscar campaigns have proven to be pivotal in winning awards and even derailing frontrunners. Are there any negative or stealth campaigns going on this year? Historically, campaigning has always been a double-edged sword. Lily Gladstone is doing an amazing job for Killers of Flower Moon, unlike Lady Gaga's cringy push for 2021's House of Gucci. Got a shot in there on Lady Gaga. Damn. Wow. What's going to happen with Joker? I don't know. Wait until that. We'll, we'll... <laughs> I can't wait. There's not, There could be 100, 100 Batmans in the room, but only one Joker. When when they were playing, you know the the past uh, male actor winners and like Joaquin, I'm like, man, can't wait for that press tour, Joker too. <laughs> I can't wait for us to talk about our 2025 Oscar picks. Are you gonna have Lady Gaga? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, but I was like, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't know. <laughs> I love Lady Gaga, but I'm not super hot on the. Jo- I didn't even dislike the first Joker. And I'm just not hot on the sequel. I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, campaigns. Yes, so I don't know. Campaigns. What was the question? <laughs> Let's see. What are are there any negative or stealth campaigns going on this year? Oh, is this a is this a shot at Frances Fisher? Is she, I don't is she even know. I, I don't honestly this year it feels like a little light on the negative campaigns to me. Yeah. I mean, uh, online people did not like Maestro, which we've talked about. So yeah. like that has been like a negative campaign from film twitter but not reality let's say no i mean maybe, maybe we'll have some like wild sensationalistic racist comments from anonymous ballots next week i can only imagine we will based so, on history but like in terms of campaigns i i feel like everyone is just kind of doing what they need to do for the most part like like universal's you know just going full court with Oppenheimer and like we said like phase two they're really focusing on Killian right um and securing it for him and like like basically like every speech that Christopher Nolan and Downey gives like they're centering Killian yeah you know so because you know Killian's an introvert Downey is not <laughs> and yeah. Nolan is used to this he's he's done this stuff before, and he's you know? very charming he's very charming he's like a rock on yeah. and this is like like I mean Killian is very charming too but like he is an introvert you know like he he gives like great speeches he's hilarious if you have not watched the Kimmel interview this week with him and Emily and Downey right. great great stuff so good it was so, really good yeah um and yeah so that's Oppie so I mean, I, I don't know, like, what else is there? Like, I, like- I was going to say, one of the things I found this year, I think, A, because this is probably the best crop of Best Picture nominees we've had in a long time. I'm, I haven't, like, mapped it out, but it feels like, I mean, I always go back to 2020, 2019, 2020 movies, but I think this maybe is a better overall group than that year. Certainly, like, it's just a great group of movies. I, my what I was gonna say is, I just think like these all these people seem to really like each other in a genuine yeah. way, and more so maybe I mean maybe it's just recency bias because this year, but I'm like even more so compared to like the last few years or recent memory, not just like but like so actively support the other nominees. It feels like it. I just feel like you're getting that more and more. It I could mean, be I, phony, I think we see but, that. Yeah. I think we see that every year like people become like best friends on the campaign like Bong Joon-ho and Taika Waititi became besties sure you know so yeah like people become close on the trail um but yeah uh I don't know yeah like there's I don't think there's been like any negative campaigning like that seems to be like studio whispers about 
someone else like like weinstein style you know no so the only whispering i've seen is like matt bellany said in his thing that like people were mad that the academy did the barbie thing did you see that that like somebody yeah. complained about that i would love to know who that was but yeah in terms of campaign i think like they're everyone's just kind of focused on you know like i think they're realistic about what can happen at this point for their films i'm talking about like studios and like right award strategists and stuff so i mean like you know again you know like flower moon it's like all about lily yeah, yeah. and and like i was thinking this too like american fiction is obviously all about cord he's been like everywhere and like yeah, they're he's like he's been everywhere since tiff <laughs> yeah and it's like they know that that's their best shot at a win and it's probably going to be the winner and you know that's it and same with lily for flower moon like you were saying like i mean like it's all yeah. about her it, it is what, what do you think about leo just kind of like piecing out since well, I, I assume he's shooting the PTA movie, so he probably Yeah, but like, you know, they, they can give him the night off to come. They could. I mean, he's kind of hurting the narrative where everybody's like, isn't it great he's there for a Lily the whole time, yeah. like, guiding her? And tonight he was just that's, like, that's, I'm that's out. That's what I mean, so. But I do think it's probably because he's shooting the PTA movie that I'm so psyched for. Do you think that'll come out this year? Um, I mean, he could. Like, they start shooting in January. He could it's just, definitely like, right. Like, it, turn around, so. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I don't think they're going to be. A post. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like a hundred fifteen million dollar movie or whatever. Know. Somehow. I mean, maybe that's just you know Leo's salary. So it's only twenty of the hundred. I think <laughs> is Leo's salary. But I was like, I guess it's it's conceivable that it could come out this year. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, like, what other campaigns are there? Like, I think like like Emma's campaign is, I think, has been pretty good too. You know, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, how she's hitting back at everyone. So, like, yeah. I think it's been interesting. Hers has been really interesting too, because I think she's also very aware of how it looks optically for her to win. Mm -hmm. And not that she doesn't deserve to win. And obviously it should be on merit and all these different things, but there are obviously a lot of people who are going to be very pressed if she wins over Lily. And the reason they'll be mad is because she's winning over Lily. And so I think she's done a really good job of like focusing on like centering Lily. Like I, I think they're, is a genuine affection there like you said i think they're yeah, you're they're, seeing they're these people over and over sisters. again right and i think you're seeing these people at all these events and like sure i believe all this to be true but at the same time like she's doing a great job of like not really campaigning for herself more for the movie i've noticed yeah i think it's like it's like her capacity as a producer like yes. obviously She's in the film, but she's really talking about, you know, how the discourse about the nudity in the film takes right. away her agency. It's like as if she has no say in the matter, or even if she's not a producer, that like she as an adult woman, like can't say no yes. <laughs> to nudity, you know. And I think they've also been centering her partnership with Yorgos a lot. You know, now they, they're gonna do another movie together. You know, so I I think that yeah it's not really like acting focused necessarily you know it's more about like the film as a whole which i guess is kind of different from you know what like bradley cooper did you know with like right. the star wars it was like all about the wreck <laughs> not right. happening so yeah uh let's see this one is from terry sent in before for tonight's sag res- results so you could self-edit on here I'll, i'm not gonna add i'll just read it and we'll just understand that it's a little dated a uh, quick question if you don't mind hi hi guys i've been predicting the academy award nominations and eventual winners since 1966 oh shit wow yes i'm a really old fart sigh i cannot recall the same four people winning the sag awards the bafta awards and the oscars in all these years as it appears stone emma stone kelly murphy divine joe randolph and robert downey are headed to accomplish at this point well Good news, Terry, because they're not, because Lily won instead of Emma. And it's also happened before, so. <laughs> uh, which frontrunner do you think is the most vulnerable to bomb out at the Oscars? Love your talks. You are both amazing and so entertaining. That's Terry. Wow, so, Terry. Please please write back and tell us about your, your years of Oscar watching. <laughs> absolutely love to hear that. <laughs> um, what, 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 what was the precursor season like back then? <laughs> Who knows, right? What was that year? Zero, well, zero regional critics like New York and LA. Or no, LA was like 1975, isn't it? Like MBR was around, I think. 
the nineteen yeah, was like the thirties. Oscars, Sound of Music won Best Picture. Doctor Zhivago and Sound of Music each had five awards. Lee Marvin, Best Actor, Julie Christie, Best Actress, Martin Balsam, Best Supporting Actor, and Shelley Winters, Best Supporting Actress. What a lineup. What did you uh, predict back then, Terry? <laughs> please write back, Terry, and let us know who you predicted. Um, um, yeah, front runner who's going to bottom out. I mean, like, it's just Best Actress is the only one left. And I don't even know if it's like either of them is a front runner like they're this, like tied basically. at this point i'd say they're pretty much tied and i don't i think so then the only front runners then are downey divine and killian and i just have a hard time imagining any of them losing I, here i don't know um i mean they all three of them have both industry awards now tough to beat and i i don't it, yeah, it's hard to see. And like two of them are from the best picture winner. <laughs> yes. It, here's what I'll say about like, just in terms of best actress. And I think not to dis, I, I don't want to like, not to dis, not to discount Lily's win or make a big, like not to overplay it or whatever. But I would just say like, one of the things I think when we were talking about our picks was that the flower moon with this broad group would not be as accessible, right? Or whatever. And the fact that she was able to win with, the SAG after members to me shows that maybe she's much stronger than any, than she's actually very strongly could win, even if the movie's on the way down and poor things on the way up and all these different things. Like it is to me, it is like, that is pretty impressive. I would say, right. That she, with this kind of performance too, like we have talked about, like super internalized, not SAG at all. Like we're just talking about like, like, so like that, plus the idea that, man, you think a lot of these, influencers and radio producers are going to be like rocking flower moon on a Friday night on Apple TV. I don't know. I just am like impressed. No, that you I mean, I listen, I, I don't, I don't think all of these people watch the movie. <laughs> Probably not, you know, but I think, you know, I think especially the actors did like SAG did maybe not after not to just be smart after as you would say. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it. Yes, it is impressive for her to win with this type of performance. Um, but I do think, like we've always said, you know, SAG loves a narrative, so I think she was helped by that. Even though we all like to believe that, you know, people are winning on merit, right? So, um, I think that is part of it too, and I think you know it is nice that even though the film itself is not doing so hot that she is independent of the film. And like the, you, like I said earlier, like you could like dislike the film, but you should still judge the parts of it separately. You know, I, we were talking about campaigns as we were talking here, Joyce, I got an email from uh team flower moon. Oh yes. I got that one too. The yeah. subject. Here's the subject yeah, in case subject. you're wondering, here's the subject in case you're wondering how they're going to frame this and like use this as, Support Lily Gladstone first, comma, Killers of the Flower Moon makes history as the first indigenous performer to win Best Actress at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. is all, it is, uh, SAG Award follows Gladstone's historic Golden Globe Award for Best Performance in Martin Scorsese's widely hailed 10 time Academy Award nominated feature, Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, there, there's this, this just like a press release, basically. Yeah. A lot of copy. So, uh, yeah. I, I, like I said, I think if you're for, in terms of Oscars, this is probably I'm like previewing my eventual push to Lily in two weeks. Slash again, shock you Wednesday. haven't done it already. <laughs> so that's when I do it Wednesday, it's going to be wow, she won with this whole SAG after group, and like people love her. And I think it just feels like it's time, and that's the whole thing. And I think we're going to go, and I think it doesn't matter that the movie is faltering as a whole, whereas. I think in other cases that we could talk about, maybe it did matter more. I don't know. I mean, the Killer Sailor Moon is definitely not the wife, which had no other nominations. Yes. So. And it's not tar. And it is tar to me again, because I think it's like similar with like the auteur, but she's not Kate. She is not tar because tar is like Shiv Roy. Yes. And Molly Burkhart is not Lydia tar. <laughs> and, 
she's more even though the movie is i think the movie and also like all these comps are so stupid right but like she's also like she didn't like kate had already won two oscars they don't necessarily like not that they didn't need to give her a third oscar but she like i think this is it's a little all of it is a little different and i don't think the michelle yo comp works either obviously because we've talked about that just it's different things they're different movies and they're different performances so i don't know uh let's see any other ones here this one's from Joe. Hi, Joyce and Chris. Love, love, love the show. But having listened to a lot of your shows lately, I have to wonder if you guys aren't as thrilled about a year where the choices are more or less locked up so early, Emma and Oppenheimer, as opposed to a year like <laughs> 99, where the competition was much tighter and there were more deserved options, thoughts. I mean, now we have a little bit of a race, like we're saying in Best Actress, that'll keep it a little interesting. I will say I would enjoy it more if there were more races. Yeah. Um, it's like, to me, it's not about like the film or the actor or the category. It's just like in general, because I remember like when I used to watch the Oscars in the 90s, like as a kid, like it was, I mean, it was also like, you know, no internet, like pre-internet. And like also as a kid, like I didn't have like a lot of access to you know like just like um coverage of it which is like primarily in like newspapers yes you know so it it was just more exciting um trying to like make predictions without a lot of data right mm -hmm. and i think it's re it's obviously changed a lot with the internet and social media and then the proliferation of a billion critics groups and then it just seems like a ton of rubber stamping we we've talked um, about this a lot yeah. that's the problem right like is mm -hmm. that no like everybody kind of just like kind of locks in and it ends up being too rubber stampy and too like obvious really going into these nights like i mean what was the last best picture race where you were like really unsure going into oscar night i guess like even Parasite, I felt like that. Like I maybe in hindsight, being twenty twenty, maybe it was an upset that Bong won for Best Director. But I felt like it was so obvious that Parasite was going to win Best Picture. Yeah, like I wouldn't consider that because I was on the Parasite train for winning Best Picture when it got the SAG Ensemble right. nomination. Right, and I think you could have so. said there would have been a split, maybe where Sam would have won Best Director or whatever. Right, but it felt yeah, like that was the, clearly. But like I, so like to me because I was predicting it. I don't consider that up in the air right? or like a shocker or anything. Um, I mean, Moonlight, yeah. I guess, would have been Moonlight. Yeah, Moonlight was maybe. like, that's like the- That's the biggest upset. Yeah. So and then beyond that, all of these, like, I mean, again, hindsight being 2020, it like always Spotlight felt like- was, you know, like a surprise, I guess, because, but not like, I don't think we've had shockers. Moonlight was a shocker, obviously, the way it went down and just in yeah. general. I think that was like a big shocker. I think you could probably like 12 Years a Slave, that felt like pretty like clearly going to win. Yeah, that was going to I know win. people were um, talking. I mean, like you might just have to go back to Crash, so. <laughs> so like that's what I'm talking, like Crash probably would be like, I and I don't know. It just feels like everything is too samey now. A lot of them. Yeah, I mean, like I... Like the parasite year, like that, that was, you know, same acting winners everywhere. It was 2020. So mm -hmm. never talked about those categories. Right. And you always say this too. The, the, we love phase one because there's like a lot phase of chance. Favorite. Right. Yeah. And then in phase two, even this year, like we shed off categories pretty, like best supporting actress. Like if you were doing a bar graph, like immediately that was over, right? Phase like, one. Like I had been saying this whole time, we're never going to talk about this category. <laughs> and then Best Supporting not. Actor kind of came right behind. I think there was still a little doubt in terms of like- it was, it was because the, like a lot of people, I think were predicting Ryan for the Globe. Right. And I think once the televised awards happens, we knew, we knew Downey was going to like flex his muscles, but it still felt like Ryan could win the Globe. And then there's maybe a bit of a race. But then once Downey won, it was over- and then best actor, we forced into a race maybe a little more than we needed to and ended up being like killing it anyway. And now best actress is the last person standing as we go into the Oscars. And that's great. And I mean, they could 
there will be a lot of drama around that. And like you said, a lot of the lower category, below the line categories, excuse me, would be like maybe more of a toss up though, you know, not, not super crazy. And we'll see if there's any upsets. Beyond yeah. That. Like it's fun that last year visual effects was locked beyond fucking locked. And now it's just like, I don't know. Avatar. Yeah. Remember Avatar way of water. Uh, last one here. This one just came in, Joyce. I'm going to read it. Wow. At 11.55? And it's not even about SAG. And it's uh, it makes me feel bad because I don't, I can't believe this is a, this is something that we're we're projecting. I'll just read the email. It's from Rachel. Hi, we're Joyce. we're projecting. Yeah, listen. Hi, Joyce and Chris. Longtime listener. I saw Dune Part 2 and Austin and Zendaya stole the movie from me. Why do you two talk so condescending when it concerns Austin? He's such a humble, sweet what? guy. I, I love know. Austin Butler. I know. I met him at a screening for Masters of the Air. It seems you don't respect him at all. What? He was brilliant as Fade, uh, Fade Rafa, who's the character in, in Dune. I'm wondering what you have against him. That's from Rachel. Rachel, I, I have to what? apologize if we come across what? as anti-Austin. Did Rachel listen to us last year? We love Austin. Maybe I, it's me. I love Austin. Listen, Austin has never looked better than he did in the Carrie Diaries. Uh, I'll have to speak up here. A, I- I'm sorry if it's come across that way. I love Austin Butler. No, too. I don't. I I would love to know how we have come across that way because we are him. not. We are Austin Butler supporters. I, we're definitely Austin Butler supporters on this show. I love uh, him in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He is fantastic. A great performance. Like last year, we were all about how he was not a breakthrough performer. Now, because we, he's been around since like 2006. I, I will say this: I don't particularly think Elvis was very good. Not my favorite movie. Like, no, no, yeah. Not his fault. He's great. Uh, I love The Bike Riders, which will come out this year, and he's awesome in it. It's like a great performance. I mean, I love Hunks in the Air, as I call it. Yes. Masters, Masters of, the air. of the Air. I've seen the whole thing. You know I have. I've been telling you all about it for you like love it. two months. So much. Um, he's, he's great on it. Like this past episode, episode six, my favorite. I've told you all about it. I mean, the episode itself is like whatever, but like the last minute of it is hilarious. Like hilarious in that, like, you know, it's coming, but the way they do it, like, it's just, I mean, if you haven't seen the show, I, I won't spoil it for you, but just like a, like a great moment. So, but yeah, I've, I've, I've supported Austin for like a decade, basically over a decade, I would say. And if it came across, so like, I'll, speaking of Dune too, it's being, uh, we could talk a little more about it, I guess. I was like, and I was just talking about this with one of my buddies who hasn't seen it yet, but we're going to see it. I'm seeing it again, Joyce, you know, I am obviously. Of course you are. IMAX 70 millimeter, the whole thing. Uh, not his, not any fault of his own, but the movie is like, really going on a great pace and then it has to stop to introduce fade and austin and it's like a 15 minute sequence that's in the trailer you've seen it like all the black and white stuff and that's like kind of like it and it does i don't think it's bad it's like it, in the vacuum it's great and even in the movie it's fine but it does like stop the momentum of what i was really enjoying in the movie and then it kind of picks up so i don't that's not austin's fault and he's the movie's great and he's really good in it so i I, 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 saw, I don't even think you said anything negative about his performance in no, he's really good. Week. So this I, is like very, very strange to Rachel, me. Rachel, I'm so sorry. I, I know. Apologize like we apologize. I don't know how we've projected that. <laughs> um, like I've loved him on, you know, Hannah Montana, on Life Unexpected. I I don't know where this is coming from. Truly, switched at birth. So you go deeper on Austin than I do. I yeah, love I, I go back to his TV days. I'm a true fan. I'm only so. from I'm only from Hollywood. You're only from like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I only know from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but man, he is the Nara Chronicles. Come on, guys. No. But he was great in Once Upon a Time Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And he is great in uh Bike Riders, which I'll be obsessed with over the summer again. Since I'm like one of the only everybody who saw to tell you ride was like, it's fine. And I was like, it fucking rules. <laughs> I loved it. it was, so, much. so um there so you know like the dune promo tour so they 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 just landed in new york yes. from south korea yesterday but there was like from like the press they did in south korea i don't know i, I guess it was like some like show or something but there's like clips of him um and you know he has like a, an earbud because like the translation and everything and he's like listening intently and he's rocking this 
black leather jacket and i'm like this looks straight out of the bike riders it's great he's got to get that promo in coming in june <laughs> he's, uh, he's 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 he must be so tired because he did masters of the air or excuse me honks in the air promo january and then he couldn't even com- complete the press tour for it because he had to go straight into dune press and then he's got and now now he's got to, you know, go after this. He's going to go into Bike Riders. Bike Riders track. comes out, I think, in June. So he's got maybe like yeah. a month to recoup. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joyce, this is so much fun. I know. I can't believe, like, ending on a shocker like this. I, <laughs> it's a I, twist I, ending. It's a twist ending, but I felt like I had to address it now. because We I do have to address good. it because I don't, I don't know why. Not out there. I don't know why, like, we've given that impression. Uh, we'll be back. We're not going to, we're not going to come back to talk about the PGA awards. Uh, congratulations to Oppenheimer, I assume on it. Oh, okay. Campaign. Why don't we say this? If it's not Oppenheimer, we'll come back Monday morning, yeah. but if, if it is Oppenheimer, we go. won't come back. <laughs> if Oppenheimer loses the PGA award. Because we'll it's going to happen at like 1am. <laughs> yeah. If Oppenheimer loses, we'll absolutely be back on Monday morning uh, to talk about it. But if not, we'll talk to you Wednesday and I'll have Lily Gladstone in first place by then in best well, actress. We'll talk on Wednesday. We'll talk. Well, we'll, you'll, you'll see it on there. You know what I mean. It's fine. All right. Bye. <laughs>